Hello, my name is Findimus, and in this video we are going to be learning about using the value attribute with radio buttons and check boxes. If you want to follow along, link is down in the description below. Let's begin. When a form gets submitted, the data is sent to the server and includes entries for the options selected. Inputs of type radio and checkbox report their values from the value attribute. For example, you have the input with the value indoor, no, right here. And then you have the other one, the second one with the value of outdoor. Here you have two radio inputs. When the user submits the form with the indoor option selected, the form data will include the line indoor outdoor equals indoor. This is from the name and value attributes of the indoor input. So the name and the value. If you omit the value attribute, the submitted form data uses the default value, which is on. In this scenario, if the user clicked the indoor option and submitted the form, the resulting form data would be indoor outdoor equals on which is not useful I agree so the value attribute needs to be set to something to identify the option so you have the value versus the name give each of the radio and checkbox inputs the value attribute. Use the input label text in lowercase as the value for the attribute. Okay. So here we have the code. Um, hmm. So I'm wondering if I messed up on the previous lessons by hitting the enter button instead of just making it all like one sentence type, one line. But you can see here, it's actually all just one line. Even though it's three lines, it's just one here. So I think that may have been my issue in the previous lessons. I'll remember that now for syntax. And I won't hit the enter button. So one of your radio buttons should have the value attribute of indoor. So we're looking for radio buttons and it's an input and then type radio. So you can see here type radio and you see the input. So one of the buttons should have the value indoor. So you can see here that even though it says indoor and ID equals indoor and all that, there's there's no value. So you go to the example, and then it says value equals. So here they have it after the ID. So if you have the ID here, it would just go right here. You put a space. And we'll type value equals, and it's just going to be indoor. And then one of your radio buttons should have the value attribute of outdoor. So the next one in the line here, you can see it's outdoor for label and input. The ID is outdoor. There's no value again, so we'll hit 
spacebar value equals outdoor. Then one of your checkboxes should have the value attribute of loving. So here moving right along to the next label, we have the type checkbox and the ID of loving, right? But there's no value again. So we're doing value equals loving. And this is to hammer home, I guess, and reiterate a point how important value is when it comes to the name and the value reading it on the server side like I guess later on I'm not exactly sure but somewhere down the pipeline somebody's gonna have to read this code and when they just get the on or off instead of the actual name here for value I guess it just takes them more work to go through and, and be like the ID is lovings but anyways so again one should have the value of lazy and then one should have the value of energetic so as we see here you have the lazy input ID is lazy and we're gonna put the uh, value equals lazy and then for energetic we're gonna go after the ID again and we're gonna put value equals inner check. And that should be the objectives completed for this challenge. It looked a lot more complicated, I guess, than it is. So we'll run the test and you can see we just got a hyper combo finish which is awesome and it really I would say it really pays to understand completely what you're doing take the time to get to learn it don't rush and if you have questions leave them in the comments down below ask your fellow students or teachers also you can check out if you need help you can just get hints or ask for help on the forums here and there are other sources out there as well. Like I said, family, friends, anybody who is your mentor that does coding. And with that, make sure you submit this. We're almost all the way through the basic HTML, HTML5 section here at freecodecamp.org. And I want to thank you for watching. If you feel this video was helpful or you liked it, then click the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, you can subscribe. And if you have any questions, then post them in the comments down below, like I said earlier. I am Finnemis, and I will see you later. Have a good day, everybody.